It's going to be 2.8 uh, solving absolute value equations and inequalities. So <clears throat> what absolute value means, that means the distance away from zero. So when you're talking about absolute value, you're talking about how far away from zero is this number. And you guys have seen this before. You've seen something like this. This is asking me how far away from uh, zero is negative three. Well, if I look on a number line, negative three is right here. This is one, two, three units away. So since it's a distance, it's a positive number. Okay, so that, that's how the absolute value works. There's another number that is three units away from zero, and that's three. So what happens is we start getting into solving equations. We solve equations with one variable, which tells us like the absolute value of x plus three equals 10. Well, that means that this is 10 units away from zero. So what I do is I set two arrows down. I write the equation exactly how it looks, except for without the absolute value. And I write the equation exactly how it looks, except for I change the sign. Now I solve. So I'm going to subtract 3 here, subtract 3 here, and I get x equals 7. I'm going to subtract 3 here, and subtract 3 here, and I get x equals negative 3. Sorry, negative 13. So I get two answers. So when I'm doing absolute values, I should get two answers, okay? There are a couple of special cases, but most of the time I'm going to get two answers. So I'm going to put it in roster notation. We usually want to put the lower answer first, the lower number value first. And, th and that's it. So negative 13 and 7. Those are the two numbers that will make this 10 units away from 0. The special cases are when it equals something that it cannot equal. So if it tells me x plus 3 equals negative 4. Well, what is negative 4 units away from 0? There's nothing that's negative 4 units away from 0. So this is an empty set. There's no solution here. There's nothing that's going to make this possible. And that's whenever it equals a negative sign. Now, notice that I said equals. That's the important part here, OK? Equals a negative sign. The tricky part is sometimes we'll put stuff on the outside of the absolute value. Before you can do anything else, you have to get the absolute value alone. So that means I have to get rid of this 2, which I'm going to get rid of by subtracting 2 from each side. and I have to get rid of this negative. So remember, whenever there's not a number there, that means that there's a one. So I have negative one absolute value of x plus three. I know that this looks kind of confusing. This is a negative one. So to get rid of that negative one, I'm gonna divide by negative one. So I get the absolute value of x plus three equals 13. When I originally looked at the equation, it said it was equal to a negative, which would make you think that it was an empty set. But that's not true, because when I get the absolute value alone, it's equal to a positive. So there is a solution to this. So now we're going to set it apart. x plus 3 equals negative 13. x plus 3 equals 13. So I'm going to get for a solution 10 and negative 16. Those are the two answers that will satisfy the information that I was given. So that's the easy part. The slightly more difficult part is when they give me inequalities. So this says the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 10. What we're going to do is we're just going to solve it with equals. The same way we did the other one. This is going to give me negative 13, and this is going to give me 7. But it's not actually equal to. It's an inequality, right? So we want to think of it on a number line. We want to think of it at 7 and at negative 13. You have to check. You have to check each of the areas. That fire alarm is kind of annoying. OK, I'm going to continue going. So what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to try a value that is on this side of negative 13. I'm going to use negative 14. You have to try a value that's in between the two, which I'm going to use 0. And you have to try a value that's greater than the last number, which I'm going to use 8. We're going to plug each of these into the original rule and see if it's true. If it's true, we're going to draw an arrow towards that. 
So when I plug in negative 14, I get negative 14 plus 3 is greater than 10. This gives me the absolute value of negative 11 is greater than 10, which the absolute value of negative 11 is 11, and 11 is greater than 10. So this area is shaded. So that brings me with a little arrow this direction. Okay, now I'm going to try the one in the middle. The absolute value of 0 plus 3 is greater than 10. The absolute value of 3 is greater than 10. 3 is greater than 10. That's false. So this area from here to here is not shaded. Then I'm going to try the 8. Absolute value of 8 plus 3 is greater than 10. The absolute value of 11 is greater than 10. Absolute value of 11 is 11. 11 is greater than 10. That's true, so I'm going to shade this way. I'm going to draw an arrow this way, okay? So if I was going to write this out, that means that my solution is x is greater than 7, x is less than negative 13. So if we were going to put this in set builder notation, we would say x follows the rule that x is less than negative 13 or which this sign means or, x is greater than 7. And that's how we would write it. I, write it on two, I wrote it on two lines because I ran out of room. Let me put it properly. x follows the rule that x is less than negative 13 or x is greater than 7. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the ones that we do in class are going to be a little bit tougher than this. We might see something like 2 minus the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than um, 14. So remember the first thing you have to do is you have to get the x by itself. So we're, or the, Sorry, the absolute value by itself. So we're going to subtract 2 from each side. Negative absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 12. And then we're going to divide by negative 1. And we're going to get the absolute value of x plus 3. And what happens to this guy when I, when I divide by a negative is he has to turn around so it becomes less than negative 12. Well, it's telling me this distance away from 0 is less than negative 12. It's not able to be less than that. So this is going to be an empty set. There's no value that I can put in here that's going to make a negative value. So it cannot be less than negative 12. Very similar problem, 3 minus 2, absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 14. I'm going to subtract 3. Negative 2, is absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 11. I'm going to divide by negative 2. Get the absolute value. Go to the next page. Absolute value of x plus 3, when I divide by negative, I have to flip the sign so it becomes greater than negative 11 over 2. Well, this is saying that this positive distance away from 0 is greater than a negative number. When it's greater than a negative number, that means that it's all real numbers. Any real number is going to give me a number that's greater than negative 11 over 2. So for this one, it's anything. And what I could do is I could actually solve that out and I would see that it's all real numbers. So if I wanted to solve it, I could say x plus 3 equals negative 11 over 2. x plus 3 equals 11 over 2. I'm going to subtract 3, which is the same thing as negative 6 over 2. I'm going to subtract 3, which again is the same thing as negative 6 over 2. But remember, it's not equal to these, so we go back to the number line. 5 over 2 is 2.5, so I'm going to be at 2.5. Negative 17 over 2 is negative 8.5, so I'm at negative 8.5. I need to I need to use values that are outside of it, inside of it, and outside of it on this side. So I'm going to use negative 9, I'm going to use 0, and I'm going to use 3. So when I plug negative 9 into my original function rule right here, 2 minus the absolute value of negative 9 plus 3 is greater than 14. 2 minus the absolute value of negative 6 is greater than 14. 2 minus the absolute value of 6, negative 6 is 6. So negative 4 is greater than 14. That is not true, so it can't be over here. Okay, 
Now we're going to do the other one. We're going to say uh, 0. Plug in 0 to the original function rule. Oh, I just realized I plugged it into the wrong original function rule. This was my original function rule. So please, oh, I apologize. I'm going to start over with negative 9. I plugged it into the wrong one. Please disregard that portion. So I'm going to do 3 minus 2 times absolute value of negative 9 plus 3. It's less than 14. 3 minus 2 times absolute value of negative 6. It's less than 14. 3 minus 2 times 6 is less than 14. 3 minus 12 is less than 14. Negative 9 is less than 14. So that did work, okay? So that means from this, it's going to be shaded this way. Now I'm going to try 0. 3 minus 2, absolute value of 0 plus 3 is less than 14. 3 minus 2 times 3 is less than 14. 3 minus 6 is less than 14. Negative 3 is less than 14. That's also true. So that means I'm going to shade from here to here. And then I'm going to try 3. 3 minus 2, absolute value of, what number am I trying? 3. 3 plus 3 is less than 14. 3 minus 2 times 6 is less than 14. 3 minus 12 is less than 14. Negative 9 is less than 14. That's also true. So I'm going to shade this way. So what that's showing me is that it went between these and this direction, between these and this direction, which is literally every number. So that's why in my answer I said all real numbers. So that's two different ways to check it out. We'll talk about this more in class. There's nothing that you have to turn in. Just make sure that you understood this. Okay.